Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. So in this video we will set up our map view because if you take a look in our tracking fragment you can see that is actually a map view here but right now no map is displaying and that's what we are going to take care of in this video. First of all, in each app you want to use Google Maps in there are two options you can do that, either a map view or a map fragment because in our app if you take a look in that um, tracking fragment here fragment tracking XML file and if we scroll down a little bit here here you can see I use a map view for that but what is actually the difference between a map fragment and a map view so the map fragment is actually nothing else than a map view inside of a fragment and then you might ask yourself why would we even need a fragment so isn't that a little bit overkill if we just put a map view inside of a fragment. I mean, we already have a fragment. And yes, that is the reason why I use this map view here and not a map fragment. But there is a reason why Google provides the map view as a map fragment too. And the reason for that is that each map view or each Google map we want to include in our app kind of has its own life cycle. And if we put that map view now inside of a fragment, then we already have the life cycle of the fragment, so the life cycle functions, and then we don't have any problems to handle the life cycle of our map view. So that means if you use a map fragment, then you don't need to worry about that life cycle stuff of the map. And if you use a map view like we do here, we need to worry about the life cycle of the map by ourselves. But that is really easy to do. And in our case, a map fragment wouldn't make any sense because we already have our tracking fragment and we don't want to put a fragment inside of a fragment that is just terrible performance wise. So that's why I decided to use that map view here. Anyways, let's jump into our tracking fragment because that will be the fragment in which we will actually perform that tracking stuff. And here I want to create a private var map, which is of type Google map, a nullable Google map, and we will also set it to null initially. So don't confuse this map now with our map view. That is of type Google map, and the map view is of type map view. So this Google map will be the actual map object. And the map view is just the view that will display this Google map. So later on when we will track our actual running path, then we will use this map here to draw on it. And to actually get that map object to initialize it, we want to override on view created. And in here we can call our map view. So that is actually the view that displays our map later on. And we can call dot get map async. So that will just load our map and here you can see it is now a Google map that will be the loaded map. So we can just set our map here to it. And now if we run our app like this, then it would crash because as I said, we need to worry about the life cycle of our map. And if we take a look with our map view here, if we just type map view dot, then you can see there are a whole bunch of life cycle functions that this map view has and we can simply use them in the according lifecycle functions of our fragment. So instead of our onViewCreated function, we can call the onCreate function from our map view and you can see that requires a bundle which is our saved instance state bundle. So we can simply pass that as a parameter here. And that is exactly what we will do for the other lifecycle functions for our map view. So just override on resume for example here from our fragment and in here we just want to call map view dot on resume. Then we will have the function on start of our fragment. Here we want to call map view dot on start, not on stop, on start. Make a little space here. And yes, we are going to have on stop. Here we want to call map view dot on stop. And actually let's make those null checks here for that map view. So just in case that map view is null, we don't want our app to crash. And we also want to override on pause, call map view dot on pause. And there's also a function on low memory. So just in case the device is running on low memory, then we also want to tell that our map view, so map view dot on low memory, just that it can save some resources, for example, and also check for null here. And I know that map view also has an on destroy function. So in fragments on destroy, if we call map view 
dot on destroy here. I don't know why, but for me, this on destroy of our map view always didn't work because I always got a null pointer exception there that our map view is null. So that means that the map view must be destroyed before on destroy, which doesn't make much sense, but it was like that. So it actually got destroyed in on stop and I didn't even need that on destroy function. But in every example I found online, they just override the on destroy function just like I did here. But for me, that wasn't working. So what I will do is I will just remove this. Maybe someone of you knows what the problem with that is. If so, please let me know that in the comments, but I don't know why. And if we leave it away, there won't be any disadvantages for us. And one last important function we need to override here is on saved instance state. Because as you can see up here, we get our map asynchronously. So that means it usually takes a while to actually get it. And the on save instance state function can actually help us to cache that map so that we don't need to load it every time when we open the device. And we want to do that by writing map view dot on save instance state just as usual and pass our out state here. But that is now everything we need to do to set up our map. As you can see, we just overrided all those lifecycle functions of our fragment and just called the map lifecycle functions. So that really wasn't difficult here. And if you now run our app and try out if everything is working, really make sure that you have your API key set in your strings XML file and also connected it to your manifest. But if you got my project from my GitHub repository in the first or second video, then you have that. But let's take a look in our emulator, click on continue and on the floating action button. And now you can see our Google map is loading and we are free to move around here, zoom in and do whatever we want. So the actual functionality will come later, of course. So yeah, that's it for this video. In the next part, we will start to set up our tracking service and in general, we will spend a lot of time building that tracking fragment here and all that tracking functionality. So that will take up quite some parts, probably about eight or nine or even more. I don't know yet, but that is definitely the more exciting stuff that we will do here in this project. And I hope you could learn something new. If so, please make sure to subscribe to my channel, leave a like and comment below. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.